today we are going to update virtual cockpit uh, firmware so first thing that we want to do is to check which firmware is actually installed over here we need to turn on the ignition and press it five times holding on the fifth time volume down and we will have this hidden screen over here which uh, we can use to check what firmware is installed in the unit if you have uh, OBD11 or VCDS, you can also do this with a diagnostic tool. You don't have to go into the hidden menu, but since we have the hidden menu over here, we can easily check which firmware is installed. So if we look closely over here, we can see that the software version is 0045. And I know, and I know that there's uh, 0169 the newest one that I'm aware of, but um, I don't see any uh, USB or SD update to as high version as uh, this one, but there is uh, 0150 available, which we are going to use today. So right now, when we know which uh, version we have over here in Audi A3, S3, RS3, uh, we can prepare the SD card with the update. So let's go to the PC. And over here we have MIPSolution.one website, which contains a lot of firmwares for Volkswagen, Skoda, Audi, Seat and other um, Volkswagen related brands. On the left side, go to MQB solution, scroll down to VC8 updates. This is virtual cockpit and active info display. Look for the update for your platform. In our case, it's AU underscore C1 underscore AU37X and uh, underscore 0150 this is the um, latest available over here so let's download this it will um, it will be 50, uh, 53 megabytes so it's not that big and once it's uh, downloaded extract this and copy the extracted files to the sd card you want a full-sized sd card which i have over here not micro sd with adapter but good old full-sized sd and you want to copy over two things to the SD card, the metainfo 2txt and the uh, ki uh, folder. Yeah, so this is the update, this is the update manifest, and those two things need to be directly copied into the SD card, not hidden in some folder, not in the archive, just extract this and copy it over to the SD card and uh, the SD card needs to be formatted with FAT32 file system and that's pretty much it right now we can go to the vehicle but we will need something else one of the requirements of this procedure is to have your key in the ignition but since there's no ignition in this vehicle we need to tape the key over here to this symbol in this vehicle this will make sure this is a safety feature of the procedure. It will make sure that the key is actually here in the vehicle, close to the coil over here, and only then it will allow us to perform the update. If you don't do this, if you don't have the key nearby this um, uh, coil, you will have error like this one, and we want to avoid all errors. That's why we are going to tape it over here. I believe it's secured so right now we can prepare the vehicle um, for the update so first of all ignition on lights off climate control off we want to remove SD cards from the uh, unit over here so I have my music over here which I'm going to remove and I will take the update SD card and insert it in SD1 port. What else? Uh, since we are not going to operate any um, accessories over here, make sure that you have your windows 
little bit open so you don't suffocate inside the vehicle during the procedure. It's not uh, going to take long, but still we don't want to play with Windows once the uh, update procedure is uh, going. Engine will be off uh, if your battery is, uh, well, not in the best shape. You, want, you might want to connect uh, an external power supply to the vehicle. Okay, so right now with the ignition on and everything prepared, give the MMI system about a minute before it's fully loaded. We can go into the hidden red menu with button combination, let's switch to the um, forwards and right switch backwards. At the same time, keep it in this position for about three seconds. It will open hidden engineering menu. First option is update. Sorry that this is in Polish, but I didn't I haven't uh, changed the language over here. So let's select update. Let's select SD1 as the update source. It will take a couple seconds to verify what's on the SD card and it will show us if the update is applicable to this vehicle. And we have standard update or user defined update, which the user defined update is not available right now. So let's go with standard. It will once again check what's over here. This is list of all the components in the vehicle and we have not available for most of them, but here there are some packages that will be installed for the KI, this is Combi Instrument, the instrument cluster. So let's scroll all the way down just to confirm that nothing else is going to be updated. And we have start update option over here and some safety uh, warnings start the update and right now if i'm correct all we have to do is wait system will restart right now and it will restart oh, let me show you like this it will restart to a software download mode which is different than the um, normal operation mode this mode it's a separate partition i believe which the uh, mmi system boots up to um, and this special partition is uh, is responsible for all the um, updates in the MMI system and related modules like the amplifier and instrument cluster. We can see that it's booting up and the most important thing right now is is not not interrupt anything. It will start the update and we can already see things are getting a little bit weird and right now all we have to do is wait. It will take about five minutes maybe. We can see which packages are um, installed right now. So let's give it those couple minutes and we will check how it went. Okay. The display of the MMI system just went completely dark and the virtual cockpit right now is back on but I'm not going to touch anything right now. We can see that the uh, media title is unavailable right now. This is because MMI is not on yet. It will reboot shortly. We can see the splash screen already but well I'm happy that the display is not dead, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right now, MMI is uh, showing, it will show us confirmation of the update procedure. So let's wait a couple more seconds. It's okay, it's done. And we can see that the update for the combi instrument, for the instrument cluster is okay. We can scroll all the way down and go over here press continue and on this uh, screen we want to play uh, press the cancel cancel of the version um, documentation or confirmation it will reboot one final time and uh, i believe in the module 5f in the mmi module we will have a fault code which is uh, something usual and normal for uh, any uh, firmware update and it's easy to clear it. You can use OBD11 or VCDS to do this. I've already showed you how to do this, but well, maybe we have time right now, so we will check 
uh, I will show you once again how to do this. But first I want to check if the um, if the instrument cluster is working correctly. So MMI is on. Maybe let's turn on radio. It's still loading, so it's a little bit slow right now. Volume unavailable right now. Maybe when I remove the update SD card. Or maybe I need to reboot it. Oh, no. It's working. Okay. So, give me a couple seconds. I will check if everything works and what's new over here. Okay, so it remembers remembers that I left the instrument cluster in maps, so that's cool. I believe uh, I believe over here the phone tab is looking differently. I have more colors, I believe. There were less icons over here. Not sure, hundred percent. When it comes to media, well, nothing new here actually that I've noticed. And what else? The trip computer still looks pretty much the same. Sport displays look the same. The lap timer looks looks the same. Okay, so I believe other than bug fixes, we don't have any new features right now. I, I will still drive around um, uh, and check if there's something that uh, that will appear over here. But pretty much uh, this is it. Oh, right now let me show you. We can remove the key from here. Let me show you how to fix this um, uh, error code from the MMI system. So, OBD dongle is connected over here. OBD application is right now connected with the dongle and it's scanning through the vehicle just to give us access to all the modules. And we are going to do two things. We are going to fix and clear the fault in the module 5F and then we are going to clear faults in other modules because MMI was rebooting while other um, systems in the car were on. So there might be some faults related to missing MMI messages in other modules. There's a lot of faults over here. Okay, we will check it. So let's start with MMI. Faults. Yeah, most of them are in green. This means that those faults are not active right now. They, um, those faults are in the history and this is uh, missing communication with a couple of things. And um, the red one over here is the active one. Yeah, B201A00. This is the one that we are going to fix. So right now let's go back. Let's go to adaptation and let's write confirmation of installation change. There's a code over here. In my case, it's, it's 3010. Let's go to meephelper.com. I'm so sorry. Enter this code 3010. Calculate new code. New code is F9C2. So let's change this F9C2. And I know that OBD11 app will going to crash or hang over here. So it will be just loading and loading and writing and writing and nothing else will happen, but I know how to take care of this in this case. Well, I would like OBD11 team to fix this issue, but well, let's not go through this right now. Let's reconnect with the vehicle. So I've killed the app and I'm reconnecting uh, with the vehicle. And I believe right now, if I go to module 5F, the fault code that uh, had the red tag on the left side will have a green green tag on the left side. So it will mean that the code is no longer active and we will be able to clear it without any issues. So let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, list of all modules. 5F, false.
and or all of them are in green so we can clear them all and since we have updated the instrument cluster which is an essential part of the vehicle a lot of related modules will have some faults like the gearbox engine access control abs and so on this is why we need to go through all those uh, modules and this is why on the list over here we can see that a lot of modules have a red mark over here so right now i'm not going to show you and uh, bore you uh, with this i'm just going to go to through all those modules and clear those faults and uh, give me a couple minutes for it okay I've i'm done I'm just scanning again to um, confirm that all those faults are actually gone and as I said those were fault, uh, faults related to two things uh, data bus message missing so some module expected a message from instrument cluster or from the uh, MMI unit or lost communication with the uh, instrument cluster which was in engine I believe in gearbox in ABS well, doesn't matter, those faults were not active, so um, I could clear them easily. And uh, right now, oh, the full scan is done. We can see that we have zero faults in the vehicle, so we can disconnect from the vehicle. Uh, right now, we can also confirm if the uh, software was actually updated. So let's pretend that we are leaving the vehicle. Let's close it display off I'm not sure if the park um, indicator was on earlier but who knows let's open it pretend that we are sitting here right now one two three four five hold on the fifth and we can see that the software version right now is 0150 so actually we can confirm that the firmware actually was updated over here to I don't know help us with our OCD or something because I don't see much differences over here right now maybe there will be some things that I've no I will notice in the future but right now this helps only with my OCD knowing that um, the, the firmware was old Okay, so in the description below this video you will have a couple links and a little bit more of um, information that might be useful during the procedure. And give me a thumbs up if you like this tutorial and see you soon.